What's up guys, it's Alex from Simone Baseball Performance, and today I'm pumped, I'm here with Steven Brault, Pittsburgh Pirates top pitching prospect. How's How you doing? What's going on? Oh, just hanging out. So just start off, man, tell us, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, I'm from San Diego. I uh, grew up there, obviously a pretty good baseball place. Um, I went to college uh, Denver in Denver called Regis University, little Division II school. I went there because I wanted to. I wanted to play baseball, obviously, but I also wanted to uh, perform music. It was a big passion of mine. So it was the only school that would let me do both. So I went there and I got to hit and I got to pitch and I got to play music. And then I got drafted by the Orioles after my junior year on the 11th round. I was there for about a year and a half, and then I got traded to the Pirates and uh, been a Pirate ever since. So it's been uh, it's been a long ride, and I'm just starting. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So. A lot, of, a lot of guys don't know that you turned down, I read that you, you had offers at USC, USC, Irvine, San Francisco, all these big time schools. Now, talk about music, I mean, obviously you said music was a big reason why yeah. you changed that decision. Talk a little about that. How yeah. did you turn down those schools? Well, because for me, I've always loved baseball, um, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my life. And baseball at that point, like I was good, you know, obviously I was good, but I wasn't like, some high prospect. I didn't get drafted out of high school. It wasn't anything like that. So for me, it was, I'm probably going to go play baseball for a few more years somewhere. And, and then I'm going to be done with baseball, you know, and play it for fun. And I figured for me that I wanted to be able to train in something else that I could, you know, pursue afterwards that I would want to do. And, and Regis was the only school that would let me do music. I remember, I'll never forget. So I, I was talking to the coach from Santa Clara. I don't remember his name. And, uh, and he said something about, yeah, we'd like you to come here and and uh, you know what music? What uh, major do you want to do? And I said music. And he said, okay, let me let me talk to some people and I'll call you back. And I, I never heard from him ever again. Uh, but it was you know it's tough because there's a lot of time commitment. There's a lot of performances. There's a lot of rehearsals and there's a lot of practices and games. And so my my music director and my baseball coach got together with me when I first got there and we hashed it all out. And there were no problems. So how did you how did you that? I mean, obviously. A lot, of, a lot of you guys um, don't know, I mean, D1, D2 baseball, D3 baseball, whatever. Um, obviously, it's a huge time commitment with practices, games, um, school. Mm -hmm. um, how did you have a social life school, baseball, and music, like, and yeah. excel in music, I guess? Well, it was it was cool because I, you know, the team that I was on was very, um, very academically focused. You know, the, I was the only guy who was, yeah. you know, who got drafted. And the guys, I mean, we had such a cool team that it was... I mean, like I had 12 of my guys come to my junior recital, you know, you just don't really, when it comes to baseball and music, you know, there's kind of a disconnect, but, but I had their support, you know, and, you know, it was, I would miss some practices for rehearsals and I would miss some performances for games, you know, there's kind of a hierarchy of importance yeah. and baseball games were the top and then it was music performances and then music rehearsals and then baseball practice. So it was, um, it was kind of which, you know, which priorities I had at the time and, and I'm really glad that I did it because I loved it. I loved every second of it. And yeah, I was very busy, but <laughs> it was really fun. So are you active now still in music? As much as I can be. I mean, during the season, it's really tough. Um, I play guitar, sing, yeah, you know, yeah. when I can. But uh, my off season, I try to play in, in a band or sing with the bands. Uh, we, a few guys that I got to play with a few years ago, we got together a few times this off season, but didn't really play any shows. So, but you know, it's something I definitely keep up with. But music, you get better as you get older. Baseball, you get worse. So, um, <laughs> so there's kind of a you know there's a, there's a much sooner end for baseball than there is for music. So you say your two passions are music and baseball. Oh yeah, sure. definitely. I also love tattoos. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah. but that's like you know that's more of just an art thing. Yeah yeah <laughs> sure. So I just want to take you back a little bit. Um, the D one D two thing. Um, I hear a lot of. You know, a lot of kids message me and they say they're dead set on what can I do to play Division One baseball. They're dead set on D1 baseball. And, you know, a lot of kids, a couple of kids that I've trained play D1 baseball. They only get like two or so at bat, two or four at bats, whatever, and then they transfer to D2 and then they start playing and they obviously like playing more. Um, right. So I just want to talk about like D1, D2 baseball. What do you think? What would you say to a kid, I guess, that yeah. um, is dead set on going D1 baseball? Well, for me, I mean, if you're a guy that's going to go to a D1 school and play, I mean, that's awesome, obviously, yeah. <laughs> really good. But that wasn't going to be me. I was in the schools that I was talking to was you're going to come, you're in a red shirt, um, and then we'll kind of figure out from there. I had Long Beach State said so they wanted me to go and, and be a lefty reliever out of the pen, and I was like, no, I'm not going to. 
Yeah. I'm not gonna do that yet. I don't have to commit to doing that yet. You know what I mean? Um, and so for me, it was where am I? Where can I go where I, I'm gonna be able to play for four years? You know, I, I wanted to play baseball. I didn't want to sit and watch baseball. So um, it, it was pretty clear choice for me. But also, there there obviously are less you know scouts and stuff that came to our games. By the time that I got drafted, it was different because that little bit of traction, but. But my freshman and sophomore year, I had never seen a scout before, you know, because it, it is a smaller venue, it's a smaller school. Yeah. And I, I, I get it, but also the only way you're ever going to get seen is if you play. So, you know, I went to that school and I got to play and I got a lot better because I was playing and I learned how to play at a higher level and, and I, I just developed a little bit later than, than some people do. So I think, I think for me, it was more important, where, where am I going to play? Where, where am I going to play now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because uh, like I said, a lot of kids are asking me the D one thing. What about recruiting? I get a lot of questions about recruiting. How how did you get recruited? And I guess what would you suggest to a kid? That would... Well, I never did. So I never like paid for a travel ball team or anything like that. We, you know, my dad was my coach when I was a kid, and then I got to high school and I went to a public school and played baseball. And travel ball was kind of like, you know, so we'd have a tournament every now and then that I would jump on a team and play for. But I was never a big travel ball guy. I always played different sports. I never, you know, I never really hammered in baseball when I was a kid. I liked it, but I also liked football and basketball and soccer. You know, so I did everything. Um, but I don't know. I, I think when you're getting recruited, it's for me. All I can say is my experience, right? So, so when I got recruited, it was because I went to a a tournament in Arizona. They have the um, Junior Fall Classic, Senior Fall Classic, and with the travel ball team that I was playing with, went and played that tournament, and that's where I met a lot of coaches. I did do two of those college showcases. One of them at UCLA, they said I was garbage, and one at USC, which is where I ended up getting the offer from um, as a pitcher. So it's kind of funny, you know, two different schools, yeah, yeah. completely different that's ideas. Uh, but yeah, so I think I think it's kind of you want to stay within your means. You know, it's it. You don't want to blow all of your family's money on going to all these crazy tournaments and everything, and then it not pan out. Yeah. I think I think the best way to go about it is to just just play the game in any way you can. Play the game, and then if you're good, somebody's gonna find you. Definitely. Definitely. So, one kind of off topic here, but I mean, I guess college. Uh, I've heard that I heard that you were an all you were an all American in college. It hitter, was hitter. Hitter, yeah. Well, how are you? How are you hitting this year? I guess. And, well, I haven't hit yet this year, so double A, triple A, um, we only play, if it's two yeah, National League yeah, teams, that's, right, that's, that's right. the only way we do it. If there's you know, single American League team, we don't hit. So yeah. uh, I haven't gotten a hit yet this year. We've only played the National League team once and uh, pitched yeah. in that series. I've hit pretty well yeah. in pro ball. I've yeah. got two hits in Major Leagues, oh, too. Really? So I got, awesome. I got first something. Hit off? Mike Leake, first oh, at really? bat. Wow. First at bat, yeah. It's pretty funny. It's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, I want to get in some questions. Um, a lot of you guys sent me some questions in for – Steven, so uh, let's get to it. I just picked a couple from each uh, each kind of platform here. So um, on Snapchat, Jake Kane asks, um, what was the biggest um, kind of adjustment you made from going to high school to college? I think the biggest thing for me was uh, growing up. You know, when I was in high school, I was the same height I am now. I was about six foot, a little over yeah. six foot, but I was 155 pounds. I mean, I was really skinny, I was really small. I went to college. And my, you know, when I first got there, my coach said, "Hey, you're gonna work with Dave, who's our third baseman, and Dave's gonna get you big." And then that was that was what it was. And and so we drank all these protein shakes, you know, and we would there was like weight gain or protein shakes, and we would just, you know, work out in the mornings together. Um, and I think just over time that kind of helped me, helped build me up. Um, and then I learned how to hit a slider because I had never really seen a slider in high school. Yeah. You know, people usually throw the curveball. Yeah. And so the first time I saw a slider in college, I was like, what? That is impossible <laughs> to hit. Um, but, you know, I think just being able to change your horizons, get to meet new people. You, I feel so bad for players who don't play in college, for players who go straight from high school to pro ball because you never get the experience yeah. of playing with a college team where your only focus is winning. Yeah, that and bond. It's, yeah, yeah, and you get a crazy bond. So it's really cool. Um, so I think the biggest change is is growing up. I think you're going to all of a sudden be thrown into a much higher level of baseball because when you're in high school, you're a senior, you're at the top. The oldest person you're playing against is your age. 
And then the next year, if you're a freshman playing in college, the oldest person you're playing is a full-grown man, a 22-year-old man, you know, and you're still an 18-year-old kid. So, so it's it's a big difference. I think it's that huge change. You learn things really fast. So, what what advice would you give a freshman, an inco incoming freshman in the fall, then, playing a baseball, playing a yeah, baseball team? Yeah, I would probably say be patient. You know, stick with it. At first, it's gonna be it's gonna be fast. It's gonna be a fast game. You know, pitchers will be throwing harder. You know, everybody's gonna be faster. Everybody's gonna be stronger. I would say be patient. Wait till spring. You know, you got you got all fall and winter to figure it out. Spring comes around, and you, you'll be on pace. Sure. All right. Next question came from Robert R H Baseball sixty on Twitter. He um, he pretty much asked for you know weighted ball advice and. Yeah. Be, everybody, that's the hot question I get all the time. How can I throw harder? Everybody wants to throw harder. No one wants to learn how to pitch. Yeah, um, of course. So, I mean, guess, I guess uh, talk about weighted balls and yeah. velocity and training and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, I, um, I just did weighted balls for the first time this offseason. I had, I had done I had done bands, um, the normal kind of band performance, stretching before throwing for since college. But um, just started doing weighted balls this offseason. I actually really enjoy it. I do it sparingly. I did it more during the off season than, all, than I do it during the season itself because we throw so much anyway. Uh, but I got it from my buddy Trevor Williams, who's who's with yep. the big league team right now, and um, and he's you know the program we got is sort of the drive line program, but we kind of took some stuff out, kind of did it our own way yeah. to make it more. Because basically the way we did it was if it doesn't make your arm feel good, we're not going to do it. You know, we're not going to force something that doesn't feel right. Um, I think a big part of throwing harder is is this is gonna sound stupid, but it's like throwing harder. You know, like actually putting in the effort, getting behind the ball, getting underneath your legs, pushing forward and being able to throw harder. And I think obviously weight of ball is gonna help, you know it's gonna help your stability and your strength if you do it correctly and everything, but it's not the end all be all. It's just there's there's no there's no magic key to throwing harder. I think if some people are gonna throw harder than other people. I'm never gonna throw a hundred. That's not going to happen. I understand that, but but it's like you said. Nobody wants to learn how to pitch anymore. Yeah. But I think that's one thing you. I think a lot of people learn in college. Actually, I think you learn how to pitch more than if you just go yeah. straight to pro ball. Sure. So what what did you do with the weight balls? Did you do pull downs? Like we did pull guns? downs. Um, we did those like okay. So say it's a three month off season yep. throwing program. Okay. For the first month, absolutely not. For the second month, yes. For the third month, less. So we, gotcha. we kind of made it so that we, the second yeah. month was our more intense month. The third month, getting ready for the season, we kind of tapered off the, the weight of ball throwing after gotcha. regular throwing, yeah. um, and just do it before as a shoulder warm up, stability warm up gotcha. kind of thing. So I'm curious, how many times did you do that per week? It's like pull downs just once or three? Oh, three, three times really? a week. Yeah, okay. yeah, we were doing because I mean we probably weren't doing as much as other people either. I mean it was it was just we did them into a wall. We did. We would do long toss. I'm a big fan of long toss. Okay. Um, I think it helps my arm feel great. Uh, you know, never had any arm problems. But um, you know, it's kind of a. It's it's always helped me. I think that it just helps you get in your legs a little bit more okay. than just staying at yeah. 60 feet and throwing as hard as you can. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of long toss too. I, I preach that to the guys. Um, what um, I'm curious. What do you do post start? Because I think. I've talked about this to some guys, but I think um, the best kind of um, way to flush the lactic acid out of your arm is a 60% long toss, I think. Um, you're talking about like the day after? Yeah, the day after yeah. start. What do you do after? I'm just curious. No, I, I, yeah. just, I just have different, I've, I've had a couple guys that I've trained that have success doing that. Other guys don't like it, but I'm just curious what yeah. you like. Well, okay, so personally, I'm a big runner. So okay. after after a start, like immediately after a start, I'm going to go probably get on a bike or something and bike for a little while. Yeah. Um, but the next day, I will definitely run distance, and I will do. I'll open up. I'll, I call it opening up the arms. So, yeah. um, sure. depending on how it feels, we'll go out. Not crazy effort, but getting. Yeah. I think it's really important to get your arm moving again yeah. to kind of yeah, kind of get that lactic acid out of there. Otherwise, I just feel like it's just constricting yeah. more and more. Yeah, it's amazing how many guys are shut shut down in like a couple days after. I don't yeah, know. yeah, it's, it's good. All right, next question. Next question came from Jake Lind on Instagram. He asked pretty much your, what was your training in high school. You kind of got into some of it in college. You didn't really. Um, so just kind of talk about your evolution of training, I guess. In high school, I didn't do any weight training. Uh, you know, we ran a bunch, but our school we were kind of a baseball juggernaut when when I was when I was there. I think they 
pretty much still are. But, you know, we didn't lift, we hit a lot. That's what we did. We hit a lot, we threw a lot, we did baseball stuff a lot. Um, but when I got to college, my freshman year, we didn't lift too much. My sophomore and junior year, we got a new coach in who kind of broke everything down, and then that's when we started doing the 5 a.m. lifting every day, you know, that kind of stuff. It's tough. But, uh, but I did grow. Um, but that was, in the off season, we would do a more strength-based workout, and during the season, we would do a more flexibility, mobility kind of workout. When I got drafted by the Orioles, uh, it everything changed. I mean, the Orioles were power lifting. We would do, I was doing hand really? cleans. And, really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, Olympic in, in lifting. Season? Yeah. In season, yeah. Really? Olympic lifting wow. in season. And it felt good. Like, yeah. I, I felt good. You know, we would, I would lift, I would finish my start, and I'd go in, and I'd, like, max squat, like, immediately. You know? yeah. So it was just a different kind of process that, that we did there. When I got traded over to the Pirates, I, I mean, once again, full 180, everything changed. And now I've found something that works for me, and it's it's a, nowadays what I do is, say in a five day rotation, mm -hmm. I will, the day I pitch, I will you know run and do that stuff. Obviously it's an exhausting day. The yeah. next day I'll lift lower body and run a lot. The okay. next day we throw another bullpen, that's gonna be an upper body lift day, yep. and then some running. And then the next two days are agility stuff. I'm good to go. So nice. um, try to keep it, try to keep it spicy. I never do the same thing. Yeah. I never do the same thing. Try to. Always, I, I'm a big fan of the idea of tricking my body. I got that from. I used to do boxing in high school. Okay. So they were a big fan tricking the body. Do something different. Yeah. You can Yeah. Never want to be stagnant. That's good. That's. Uh, I, I like how you set that up. That's kind of how I I do it with the guys too. I always like to keep the lower body day as close to the start or away from the start, I mean, as possible, oh, obviously, yeah. to, because that's the most, obviously, intensive. Yeah, day, you know? yeah, some of the guys do, um, they lift once in between each start, and they do a full body on their bullpen yeah, day, yeah. and I don't see any problem with that, but at the same time, you're kind of just crushing one day really yeah, hard, yeah, yeah. Um, and you already do that with your start, because on a start day, you, oh, you yeah. crush your body, yeah. you know, I think as a position player, obviously, things are different, they kind of get their lifts in when they can slash feel like they need to yeah. during the season, but those guys go so hard in the off season that it's, it's a little different. Yeah, I, de I definitely like how you set it up. That's awesome, man. All right, next question. Casey Allen on Instagram, Casey Allen 17 asks, what does your, well, you kind of talked about it, what does your uh, pre, well, I guess your pre-start pitching routine look like? Um, like what I actually do that day? Yeah, that day, like, yeah. like tomorrow morning when you wake up. It's, yeah. it's, ele it's 11. 12 right now guys yeah and he's talking he's he's doing this interview <laughs> with us so and he's starting tomorrow so yeah 7 p.m so okay. be appreciative of this interview <laughs> uh, so what i'll do i like to get up early uh not early not I mean, baseball early so i'm not sleeping until 11 o'clock yeah um and i get up have some breakfast have some coffee yeah. try to keep a normal schedule so that i can eat a lunch too because i have a hard time eating when it gets closer to game time there's body's yeah. just kind of getting ready so I'll eat a breakfast, eat a lunch, sometimes take a nap, um, get to the field around two hours, two and a half hours for game time. Usually on a start day, I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna try to treat it like any other day as far as when I'm at the field. I, I'm a goofy guy, so I have fun with the guys. I don't really, I don't become like a serious person or anything. Yeah, but, uh, but then as far as throwing goes, I do long toss before I get on the mound uh, beforehand. And then, I mean, I, st I start getting ready for the game about 45 minutes before game time. And it's a, it's a activation stretch, long toss, get on the mound, and I'm, I'm good to go. Nice. Yeah. So where can everybody find you? Social media, Twitter, Instagram, everything. Yeah, uh, Instagram is scuba, spelled S-C-O-O-B-U-H. Uh, it's a gamer name for video games. Uh, <laughs> You're a gamer. What do you play? Uh, I honestly haven't played the show recently a lot, yeah. which doesn't make me a gamer at all. Yeah. It's just I really enjoy the game. But I do play a lot. Like, I played World of Warcraft a yeah. certain amount when I was younger. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and then on Twitter is my name, Stephen Brawl, so you guys can look me up. But, you know, I'd be happy to answer more questions. You guys shoot me a DM, whatever. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll definitely, um, I'll link everything, guys, below so you guys can um, follow Stephen and yeah, thanks, man. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. All set.